So when we think about language, one of the fundamental questions we need to ask ourselves is what is the relationship between objects that are out there in the real world and the words that we use to describe them? So today I'd like to kind of introduce you folks to what's collectively referred to as the semantic triangle of meaning, uh, the semiotic triangle, or the triangle of meaning, mostly borrowing from Ferdinand de Saussure, who's considered the father of modern linguistics, and a book called The Meaning of Meaning in 1923 by two of his students, Ogden and Richards. Now, according to them, there are objects in the real world. Uh, they call them reference, uh, things that we refer to. In this particular situation, you have my crude representation or drawing of a cat. And most of us can say, okay, that's a cat, right? So we use a word, C-A-T, to describe what that object is. Now, if we were in different languages, we might use other words like gato or shot or neko. Or even in Vietnamese, we might use the term meow, right? Which is a pretty close representation to the actual thing that this does, you know, when it meows at you. And for most of us, naive verbal realism works. We go through our everyday lives using words to symbolize references without much thought to it. But really, in truth, when you see this object, your brain is going through a number of different calculations. You look at the pointy ears and you think, well, all cats have pointy ears. You look at the whiskers and you go, well, yeah, pretty much all cats have whiskers. And you also go through probabilistic functions. So not all cats have tails, but if a cat has a tail, you know, you odds are it's going to be more cat-like than something else that's out there. And this process of signification, or how we signify the term to the referent that's actually out there, is much more complicated than we would normally think about. Now, this particular instance, it's a very easy situation because the denotative or dictionary definition of the term cat is clearly represented by the referent that's actually out there. And for denotative interpretations, there isn't much extra involved. There isn't emotional attachments that are given to a particular object. However, if we were to change the actual object that we have that we're going to signify, let's say we use something with a little bit more emotional force, if you will. So if I was to draw up my, let's see, oh, 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 six, wait, hang on, I'll throw another one in there, right? If I was to throw up my American flag here, my 50 little dots, of course, all over the place. I can ask you what this means denotatively, and most of you folks would say, oh yeah, okay, that's the American flag. But to many of other folks that are, into, that are out there, you might have a whole host of different cognitive interpretations that arise when you look at that particular object in space. So when I first started doing this lecture all the way back in the 90s, you know, around 1999, Rage Against the Machine was the big band that was out there. Uh, the, uh, the protests at the Democratic uh, National Convention in Los Angeles were huge. You know, everybody, when I put up the sign, they would say things like, oh, it represents an evil empire. Right? It represents capitalism. It represents all these sort of, you know, sort of mephistic terms that are out there. But as soon as September 11th happened, and oh boy, I had to teach the day after September 11th, suddenly this object became a representation of patriotism. It became a representation of old glory, of Americana, everything positive that we could possibly think about it. Because this object has a whole host of different connotative assumptions when we put it through our own minds. And it's funny, because even nowadays, you know, last semester while I was teaching in class, uh, I kind of got a mix, right? Usually you get some students that kind of see it as evil, some students is seeing it as a kind of good or great uh, glory. And of course now, I'm sure it's completely partisanly divided, and we'll see even more so of it as we go to the next election. But the whole concept of having a naive, verbally realistic signifier referential representation of this object is pretty difficult, right? We can call it the American flag, because that's its dictionary or denotative definition. However, it has a whole host of other connotative assumptions along with it. And this is a real big lesson that is supposed to be learned from the triangle of meaning, which is that when we break free of naive verbal realism and realize that all referential objects out there in society involve a whole host of different mentally signified characteristics to it, we realize that all terms, all symbols, all language structures, in fact, have a level of rhetorical sensitivity to them. 
And your dependence upon a certain particular symbol will give you the ability to evoke emotions from a connotative framework inside of any particular speech or oratorical pleasure. 